anticipation of at least five new listings in Kenya in 2011 and many investors say they want to piggyback off the successes of the NSC in 2010 when the market grew and brought returns in the region of 37 percent yes yes okay so tell us whether or not the prospects are ripe for listings yes I think the prospects are right for listing um, the market is very liquid um, consumer investor confidence are high um, so we expect the economy to ride um, and grow based on consumer confidence investor confidence mm -hmm. the market is pretty liquid um, today the papers announced that they expect uh, our banking sector to show profits in excess of 47 mm percent -hmm. to the to the previous year um, so it's, it's, it's exactly the right time to list on the stock exchange. Although the market seems to be hungry from your assessment for IPOs and liquidity reinforced by uh, successes on the bond market, there is a sense that retail investors in particular are holding back a little bit. Um, I'll remind you of the Safaricom IPO oversubscribed, a lot of fanfare around it, but we're told that mm -hmm. a lot of investors still haven't seen the returns or the benefits of that. And so there is a sense that maybe this is not quite what they should be doing. How, what are you doing to sort of address the caution uh, that retail investors demonstrate? Um, I think uh the fact that retail investors are not coming into the market is misplaced. Um, turnover in 2008 on our market was about 482 million US dollars. In, two, in 2010, it was 1.4 billion US dollars. Um, most of activity on our markets is by domestic investors. Um, actually, it's about 80% skewed towards domestic investors. Mm -hmm. Certainly, most of the investors are institutional, but there's also a huge mix of retail investors. So one, retail investors are back. Uh, the stock exchange, in anticipation of even greater volumes this year, is investing about 1.4 million US dollars in a broker back office system. Mm -hmm. So it's going to tightly couple our um, trading systems and our clearing and settlement systems. And one of the features of this broker back office is to facilitate internet trading. So we are trying to improve access to the market mm -hmm. and also boost the integrity of, of our trading systems. I want to underpin the word integrity and what's been done about the safeguards uh, against rogue or weakly capitalized stock brokerages because part of the reforms within the NSC have had to address this particular issue and it's been one of the um, negativities that's also made investors mm -hmm. hold back a little bit yes that that is very true so what the stock exchange is doing and with the authority and with the association of kenya stockbrokers and investment banks we're investing in infrastructure i just talked about our broker back office um, all our members have to increase their uh, capitalization so if you're a stockbroker you have to increase your capitalization from five million Kenya shillings to 50 million Kenya shillings. If you're an investment bank, you have to increase from about 20 million Kenya shillings to 250 million Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. And then the stock exchange itself is demutualizing. So we are separating ownership of the stock exchange from the right to trade on the stock exchange. Mm -hmm. So by the second half of this year, the Nairobi Stock Exchange will convert into the Nairobi Securities Exchange Limited, mm -hmm. will be owned by shareholders who will be different from our member firms. Continuing to talk about conditions at the moment on the market, we know that for the better part of 2011, certainly the end of January into February, we've seen a lot of bearish sentiment creep into the NSC 20 and it's closed in the negative for most sessions. Is it just an aberration and something that will change as we move forward, or is it an indication of uh, a bit more caution concerning the Nairobi Stock Exchange and those gains we saw in 2010 might not actually permeate 2011? I, I think uh, some of it has got to do with profit taking. The market did rise in December and um, investors are taking profits. And I think going forward, 
we expect the markets to um, market trading to boost. Mm -hmm. um, th I think I believe today market trading has also gone up substantially. So I think the tide is now turning and going forward uh, trading should activity should increase. The reason I'm asking you this question about uh, what exactly is going on technically on the bourse mm -hmm. is because for other companies that have held back and not wanted to come public for a while is because there've been other avenues that they could utilize for instance share sales on primary markets uh, private share offerings um, those kinds of alternatives to actually coming full on and listing on the stock exchange um, with those alternatives available what would make listing a little more lucrative and attractive at this time um, what the stock exchange is trying to do is we are we're, we're going out and talking to potential issuers and talking to them about the benefits of listing on the stock market. Um, certainly, one of the benefits of listing on a regulated exchange is the boost in liquidity you get from the trading of your shares on a regulated market, the boost in your profile. Um, investors, suppliers, um, potential shareholders see that you're listed on a regulated exchange and say that if you can meet the disclosure requirements of a stock of a regulated market right. then you're a cut above your competition um, certainly there have been a few a number of companies family bank real insurance um, who have raised capital from the private markets um, but they've all said that they're doing this with the ultimate intention of listing on the stock exchange so we expect within the next two to three years to see these companies coming to list on the stock exchange. All right, let's name names now, um, Donald, in terms of what we're expecting. Obviously, the news this week is TransCentury gaining shareholder approval to start thinking about an IPO and floating their shares. Everything's now subject to uh, the regulator's approval. But how would this invigorate the market? Um, as a, well, one of the th um, indications we have from the market is that it's, the market is very liquid and investors are looking for investment opportunities. So companies like TransCentury, which is an um, infra infrastructure services investment company with a presence in nine African countries, companies like British American Investment Company, who have also said that they intend to actually raise capital on the stock market, subject to getting the regulatory approvals, mm -hmm. will meet um, potentially investors who are very keen on diversifying um, their investments and, 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 and putting their money in, in, in new investment opportunities. Another company that wants to come on board is Uchumi, and uh, they're quite confident that they've met all the requirements of the Capital Markets Authority. But this is a company that was once listed and then had to withdraw because of a lot of their sort of debt uh, problems internally. How do we avert this? This, this, I won't call it a trend, but the prospect yes. of a company listing and then a few years later on having to delist because it's not well capitalized, it's in too much debt and just doesn't fit the realm. I think one of the ways to, to mitigate against this risk is to encourage and even um, put into the regulations more disclosure um, certainly, companies have bad years and good years, yeah. and the issue is to ensure that they inform their investors, existing investors and potential investors, well ahead of time when they're facing capitalization issues, so that the investor is able to make an informed decision. So as the stock exchange, as the market regulator, we're encouraging our companies to ensure adequate disclosures. And we have noted in some cases when the company even issues a profit warning that the market rewards the company for its disclosure by the share price going up after the disclosure is made. Another interesting phenomenon is that uh, Absa Capital is in talks with its affiliate uh, Barclays about launching exchange traded funds on the Nairobi Stock Exchange. So this would create even product innovation if it were to happen. Uh, how excited are you about some of these prospects? We are very excited. Absa Capital, the team from Absa Capital actually came 
to the stock exchange and met with management. They've also met with the authority. So currently what is happening is we're looking at the, they're actually looking at the rules and regulations that need to be put in place for an ETF to be listed on the stock exchange. And then finally, obviously, consolidation of the East African community. And we know a lot of Kenyan companies have crossed listings uh, in Uganda mainly, but also within other member states. As companies come onto the bourse, those are also prospective new avenues available to them. Um, how quickly is this pace of uh, just streamlining and harmonizing markets across East Africa so that everybody can get maximum benefit from this big market that is the East African community? Well, we, we have seven companies um, from Kenya listed on the Uganda Securities Exchange. They provide about 80% of liquidity on that market. We also have about four, some of them, the same companies listed on the Dar es Salaam Stock Exchange, which is in Tanzania and they provide about 62% of market liquidity. And then more recently, the Rwanda Stock Exchange was launched. Um, it launched with the trading of their domestic brewer. It's called Brale Roy. Mm -hmm. Our depository, our central depository and settlement corporation is the registrar for Brale Roy and is providing depository services for the companies um, in, in, in Rwanda. So, from, from an infrastructure point of view, our markets are able to talk, in, to talk to each other. And going forward, we believe this um, communication is going to, to, to increase. So infrastructure to facilitate trading and um, settlement of shares is, is happening. And shortly, once the stock exchanges begin to demutualize, then we see the opportunity for mergers between the various stock exchanges.